will talk about the anatomy of the female breast. I will talk about the development, the formation of the breast, the age changes, the extension upward, downward, medially and laterally, and then we'll talk about the nipple and the areola, the structure, arterial supply and the venous drainage, lymph drainage, and the clinical importance of the breast. Start by the development of the breast. The breast is ectodermal in origin. It develops from the ectoderm during the second intrauterine month. This ectoderm forms two milk lines, and the milk lines extend from the axilla to the groin. So it is ectodermal in origin. The ectoderm forms two milk lines. Each line extends from the axilla uh, to the groin. Only the upper part of the milk line persists and the remaining part disappears. So the upper part of the milk line forms the breast. Sometimes there are accessory nipples. And these accessory nipples are located along the course of the milk line. Then we'll talk about the formation of the breast. The breast is, of course, is formed of skin, skin and fascia, fat, and this gland, which is mammary gland or milk gland, and this mammary gland is modified, is sweet gland, and it is present in the superficial fascia and of course the breast is formed of also contains blood vessels, nerves and lymphatics. Then regarding the age changes in the female breast or in the breast. Okay. Before puberty the breast is rudimentary, is very small and the male breast and the female breast are identical. At puberty, due to hormonal changes and the secretion of estrogen, the breast becomes rounded due to fat deposition. During the pregnancy and the lactation, the breast becomes large and tense. And at menopause, the breast loses fat and becomes smaller in size. Regarding the extension of the breast, it extends upward till the second rib, till the level of the sternal angle. It extends downward till the sixth rib. It extends medially till the medial margin of the sternum. It extends laterally till the mid axillary line. How about the axillary tail? This axillary tail or the breast tail? The breast tail is present in the axilla. How about the nipple? The nipple is the conical projection. In the male, it lies in the fourth intercostal space, but the position of the nipple in the female is variable due to the variability in the size of the breast. Around the nipple, this circular area or circular pigmented area is called the areola. So the areola is the circular pigmented area around the nipple. And it is pigmented or it is dark in color during the pregnancy due to secretion of the melanin spreading the factor by the placenta. So the extension upward to second rib downward to the sixth rib, medially to the medial margin of the sternum, laterally to the mid axillary line, and the breast tail is present in the axilla. The nipple in the male is located in the fourth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. Okay? And this areola is the colored or it is a pigmented area around the nipple. Regarding the breast bed, the muscles deep to the breast, actually two muscles, medial two-thirds, 
formed by the pectoralis major muscle, lateral one third serratus anterior muscle. This is the serratus anterior, this is the pectoralis major. So the breast bed is formed of two muscles, medial two thirds by the pectoralis major, and the lateral one third by the serratus anterior muscle. Regarding the structure of the breast, as I said, the breast is formed of skin, superficial fascia, fat, mammary gland, okay, blood vessels and the nerves. Actually, the breast has no capsule, and it consists of glands and fat. No capsule, glands, mammary gland, and fat. The breast is divided into 15 to 20 lobes by septa. This is a septum, another septum, septum, okay? The breast is divided by fibrous septa into 15 to 20 lobules. These fibrous septa form what is called suspensory ligament of Cooper. This suspensory ligament of Cooper suspends the breast. Each lobe contains mammary gland, and each gland has lactiferous duct. This is the lactiferous duct. Okay, lactiferous duct. So we have 15 to 20 lactiferous duct. Each duct dilates under the areola to form lactiferous sinus. And these lactiferous sinuses act as milk reservoir and then the duct opens into the nipple. So the breast has no capsule. It consists of glands and fat. It is divided into 15 to 20 lobes by septa. This septa form suspensory ligament of Cooper, which suspends the breast. Each lobe has only one lactiferous duct. Each duct dilates under the areola to form lactiferous sinus and then the duct opens into the nipple. So the nipple contains 15 to 20 openings of the lactiferous ducts. Regarding the arterial supply of the breast, the breast is supplied by four arteries, P, 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 L. The first P, okay, pectoral branch of the saracoacromial artery. The second one, perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery. Third P, perforating the branches of the intercostal arteries. And the lateral thoracic artery, which is a branch from the axillary artery. Okay? From the second part of the axillary artery. So, arterial supply of the breast. Four arteries, three P's and one L. Pectoral branch of thoracoacromial artery. Perforating the branches of the internal thoracic artery, perforating the branches of the intercostal arteries, and the lateral thoracic artery from the second part of the axillary artery. Regarding the venous drainage of the breast, the veins correspond to the arteries. So we have internal thoracic vein. This internal thoracic vein drains into the brachiocephalic vein. Then we have intercostal veins. These intercostal veins drain into the internal thoracic vein, azygous and hemiazygous veins. Le the lateral thoracic vein and the thoracoacromial vein drain into the axillary vein. And then we'll talk about the lymph drainage of the breast. The breast is divided into four zones, central and lateral zones, Medial, upper, and lower. 75% of the lymphatics drain into the axillary lymph nodes. The other 25% drain into the parasternal lymph nodes and the abdominal lymph nodes. So generally, lymph drainage of the breast. 75% drain into the axillary lymph nodes. 25% drain into the internal thoracic or parasternal lymph nodes and abdominal lymph nodes. Let us talk about each quadrant and see its lymph drainage. 
So the breast is divided into four quadrants, central and lateral quadrant, medial quadrant, upper quadrant, and lower quadrant. The central and the lateral quadrant drain into the pectoral group of the axillary lymph nodes, and the axillary tail drains into the subscapular group. And from the apical, from the pectoral and the subscapular, lymphatics reach the apical group of the axillary lymph nodes. So the central and the lateral quadrant drain into the pectoral group of the axillary lymph nodes, the axillary tail drains into the subscapular group, then drain into the apical group. The medial quadrant drain into the parasternal lymph nodes along the internal thoracic artery, then to the mediastinal lymph nodes. Some lymphatics, like this one, some lymphatics cross to the opposite side to anastomose with the lymphatics of the opposite breast. Therefore, in breast cancer, we have to examine the opposite breast. Upper quadrant drain into the apical group of the axillary lymph nodes, either directly or indirectly through the infraclavicular lymph nodes. Some lymphatics cross the clavicle to drain into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes. The lower quadrant drain into the abdominal and the posterior intercostal lymph nodes. Again, lymph drainage of the four quadrants of the breast, the central and the lateral quadrant drain into pectoral group of the axillary lymph nodes, the axillary tail drain into the subscapular group, and then lymphatics reach the apical group. The medial quadrant drains into the parasternal lymph nodes and from the parasternal lymph nodes to the mediastinal lymph nodes. Some lymphatics cross to the opposite side to anastomose with the lymphatics of the opposite breast. The lower quadrant, okay, the upper quadrant drain into the apical group of the axillary lymph nodes either directly or indirectly through the infraclavicular lymph nodes. Some lymphatics cross the clavicle to drain into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes. The lower quadrant drain into the abdominal and posterior intercostal lymph nodes. And finally, let us have a clinical note about the breast. The breast cancer. Breast cancer is spread to the surrounding tissues either directly or by blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels. So breast cancer spreads to the surrounding tissues, either directly, okay, or along blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. Radical mastectomy. Radical mastectomy is the removal of the breast and the axillary lymph nodes, and actually the underlying muscles like the pectoralis major. Because the breast bed is formed partly by the serratus anterior, and the nerve to serratus anterior is running on the surface of the serratus anterior, during the breast surgery, nerve to serratus anterior may be injured during the operation, causing paralysis of serratus anterior and the winging of the scapula. So the breast cancer spreads to the surrounding tissues directly and by blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. Radical mastectomy is the removal of the breast and the axillary lymph nodes. During the operation, nerve to serratus anterior may be injured, and if injured, it will lead to paralysis of the serratus anterior and the winging of the scapula.